A very big reason people are living here today is for the sole purpose of healing others in need. We don't walk at it alone. It's a magnificent blend of individualistic people with extraordinary abilities, all joining in to heal the world together. And since all of us have the ability to heal, there must be a way to tell the world all about it. Welcome to the Healers Podcast. Syncretism is defined as blending together different beliefs, especially involving the merging of a simulation of several original discrete and ancient traditions such as astrology, theology, and alchemy. Santos Bonacci, a world-renowned syncretist, has been delivering to the world extremely valuable, time-sensitive material, information and truths that are necessary to help shift the world into an awakened state of consciousness. And hello, everybody. Welcome to the Healers Podcast. My name is Logan. My lovely host, Gabrielle. Hello, hello. And our very special guest, coming all the way from Australia, Mr. Santos Bonacci. Thank you. I'll, I'll, I'll give you one of those too, my brother. Yeah, yeah because yeah. you deserve it, man. Absolutely. The we wonderful, are. great syncretist, Mr. Astro Theology, the one and only. You know, it's been about three years since I've been following you. Well, I mean, as far as like wanting to have you come here in person, and here you are. Complete manifestation. And then, of course, she, dry, she joined in on the manifestation. Part, partly by me. But. <clears throat> yeah, well, that's what I was saying. It's, <laughs> it was a culmination of the energy that we... But I've been following you since 2013, right around there, maybe a little longer. And uh, it's just a blessing to have you here, brother. Yeah, we're Thanks. very grateful. We feel very, very, very blessed to have you here. Me too. This is my tribe. Yeah. And you know, it's, it, you know, and everybody watching, they'd be like, man, I wish I was there. Man, I'm so jealous that you got to be on a podcast with Santos. Yeah. <laughs> so welcome out, Santos. It's, it's been an honor to have you in our presence for the past couple of days since you've been here. And uh, we have one more night to go. Yep. And you're going to be doing another podcast tonight mm -hmm. with Mr. Killer Priest from the Wu Tang Clan. Mm -hmm. That should be fun. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, man. Mm -hmm. <laughs> met, him, met him the other day, and <clears throat> very nice guy. Really humble and sweet. And he just, just sweetly and softly suggested that he'd like me on his podcast. <laughs> so awesome. um, <clears throat> I was really wrapped with that, and then wrapped. Pardon the pun. He's a rapper. <laughs> and, then, and then I text my son, who's a producer down in Melbourne, uh, the Hip Hop and Experimental. And I said, oh, yeah, just I'm hanging out with uh, Killer Priest. And he goes, no way. Because <laughs> he knows him. Oh, yeah. Yeah, man. So yeah, big so name, cool. big name. He was very, very impressed. Like, wow, Dad, how'd you get that? <laughs> yeah, that's pretty amazing. Mm -hmm. That's, that's pretty awesome. amazing. Mm -hmm. So Santos, why don't you begin by telling us, I mean, most of you that are watching this podcast, you know who Santos Bonacci is, but let's talk about syncretism because that is your real forefront driver on what you're doing in this matrix reality. Mr. Astro Theology is your channel on YouTube, but you're a syncretist. And um, what is syncretism? Really, what is the true definition of syncretism? Mm. So in Wikipedia, <clears throat> it will tell you that it's, more or less syncretizing, bringing together <clears throat> all fields, generally philosophical, because that's where most of the ideological disunity on the earth is. Mm -hmm. So once upon a time, it is suggested that the world was united in thought, etc., philosophy, theology, and then some kind of a cataclysm or a traumatic experience in the cosmos, like the Tower of Babel, biblical analogy, and everything got divided and conquering began, divide and conquer. So it would be the opposite of that. And I would say the sister of syncretism, synchronicity, syncing things up in time, 
Kronos. Mm. Syncretism is syncing things up in your head. <clears throat> so this is where it should be done. Because everything's divided, you've got uh, experts in one field, and oh, and they're great in their field, which is great, but they know very little about everything else. And, and you'd be surprised how much ignorance they have of other fields. Um. Mm. And that is a handicap, in my opinion. So <clears throat> I remember when I started learning languages, which I speak eight to different degrees of fluency, uh, an old man who spoke a lot of languages said to me, <clears throat> it's not going to weigh, it's not going to be heavier to carry knowing more languages. And I thought that was funny at the time, but think about it. You know, it's not anything like uh, a weight or something that's uh, going to hurt you. The more you know, the better. Because the more knowledge you have, the more expanded your consciousness is. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So that's what I'm doing. I'm teaching the science of syncretism. So there's a model and then there's a method. And the method is the ecliptic. <clears throat> the ecliptic. So, so let's I, expand on that mm -hmm. because that's a, that's a big road to travel, yep. right? How do we simplify that? So what is the ecliptic and how does that tie into syncretism? Right. So the ecliptic is the path of the sun primarily. The sun, <clears throat> every year you'll see the sun rising and setting and it's very low when it's in Capricorn the Tropic of Capricorn, from our perspective here in Los Angeles. And then it takes six months for it to climb up to the Tropic of Cancer and then you see these big, long, hot days when the sun is in June, July, right? So you've got longer arc, probably about 190 degrees of arc, even more than 180 because longer days, shorter nights. And then in Capricorn, the days are probably, what, nine hours long and... <clears throat> Much shorter. Mm -hmm. So you see this short arc. And, and that arc, you see the sun right ascending. It rises in the east. When you look south, you face southward always when you want to see the sun rising. You can't, you can't look not toward the North Pole. You'll miss it. You have to look toward the south. And you'll see the sun <clears throat> rising in the east and right ascending. And so that path there, it's not inscribed in the heavens but it is it is there and that's called the ecliptic so <clears throat> when you work out that there is a yearly cycle and the year begins on march the 21st the equinox then you do a sine wave mm. so, you, so you start at the equator at the middle of the sine wave you go up to the tropic of cancer then back down through the equinox again in September, and then the sun falls at the fall, down to the Tropic of Capricorn, and then back up again <clears throat> to Aries. In that sine wave, the ecliptic, is all the information that we as humans can study to derive as much knowledge as we can about every sine wave that exists. In other words, every vibration from the, the smallest in this fractal holographic universe to the biggest. So, for instance, that sine wave there, along the year, you'll see there's a lot of dates of festivals. Aries has got Easter, for instance. Spring, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And Which is the, the actual New Year, right? I mean, that's would you say that's the true New Year? Yep, it is. So the Hebrew calendar, the lunar solar, has the actual right amendments to the way the calendar should be versus the Gregorian, right? Yes. Would you agree with that? Mm -hmm. Okay. I would say so, yes, because they know that Nisan is the start of the year. Well, that's Aries. Aries. Mm -hmm. Which is, okay, so let's tell you this. This is what leads into the astrology of the body, right? So where is Aries and how does it follow suit down to the twelve? Right. You say this a lot, but this has got to be redundant because people need to get this part, right? Good question. So if you start at the very top of your head and the top of the year is also March the 21st, the equinox. And then you have the sign of Aries is the first part of the body. Excuse me. <clears throat> and then you go, you proceed downwards all the way to your feet 
the two fish of Pisces. And that's called the Temple of the Soul of Man, Solomon, or Adam Kadmon. Mm. Okay. And, mm-hmm. <clears throat> so, proceeding downwards, you've got the cerebram is the ram, the lamb of God standing upon Mount Zion. Then below that, you've got the cerebellum, that's the bull, Taurus, the big neck people. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Twins, Gemini, clear to see, and the twin lungs. Mm. Cancer, the chest. Leo, the lion heart. Interesting, that word. Mm-hmm. Virgo, the pot belly. You see, that's why Buddha's got a belly, because Buddha is Virgo. Mm. Mercury, same word. Buddha, Mercury, Toth, mm. Enoch, Hermes. Oh, he's got his little belly. You rub that belly. <laughs> <laughs> Libra, the scales. Yin and yang kidney. Scorpio is the generative system. The uterus, the testes. Yeah. Sagittarius, the hips. These people have got strong hips. They like walking. Sagittarius. That's hiking. why I have big hips. <laughs> you there do? You have big hips? I don't know about that. But. Okay. I have them. <laughs> okay. I guess now we have to define what big hips actually look like in your mind, but all right. And you like hiking every day? You're she does. Hiking around She's a here. hiking freak. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. She's right. a fanatic about hiking. It's the horse. Hippos. Hippos. Hips. The hips. Capricorn, okay. the knees. Knees. Aquarius, the shins. And the fisher of men, the Pisces. two feet, mm-hmm. the two fish. Standing Pisces. on the earth. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So that's it. So that's, that's syncretism in a nutshell when you combine everything through the... The man from top to bottom, everything in between in the sine wave, right? Yes, and that's just one fractal. That's, that's one fractal. That's course. your body on the ecliptic. That's just one fractal. Okay, Gabs, I know you have a question. Yeah, for, for everybody listening, can you go into more why it's so important for people to understand these things and to follow astrology and how these things affect them? Great. Mm. So along every wave, thought wave, motion wave, water wave, uh, sound, light waves, it's all kind of waves. They all have a beginning point and they all end. So what happens is you may see a wave as a positive, so spring and summer, and a negative half, autumn, winter. And that's pretty simplistic Two is duality. And you know what happens when you really lock yourself in a dualistic mind? You, you start seeing everything from a dichot- dichotomized, sort of a polarised place rather than bringing things in the middle and together. So the ancients taught that every wave is to be divided into 12 parts. That's how nature works. It's nature's law. No one invented astrology. Nothing at all whatsoever was invented. And as for those astrologers who say that the Greeks put Libra 2,000-odd years ago into the ecliptic, well, that's provably wrong because the Dendera stone has Libra in it and it's probably hundreds of thousands of years old and there's Libra right in there way before the Greeks even supposedly did this change. What I'm saying is that it's nature that makes everything, all the sciences we have. There's nothing new under the sun. So when you understand this, you'll see that positive and negative divided into 12 becomes much more interesting. So that means if you've got a 360-degree cycle or circle or wave divided by 12 30-degree segments, you will learn something very interesting. There are 12 conditions along every wave. The very, very first part, Aries, would be cardinal fire. Well, that's interesting because fire is plasma and everything begins with plasma. Just ask conventional science. So the first 30 degrees of every wave has got this explosive Aries energy to it, plasma, and it's generated at the beginning of every wave. It's a pulse. Plasma and pulse are the same word. Palla and pa'uls. Plasma, pa'uls. Then, after that has exhausted its 
signature key, signature frequency of energy, it hands over to the next 30 degrees of energy, which is a solid torus energy. It's a solid frequency. And it's fixed earth. I'll explain what mutable, uh, cardinal fixed and mutable refer to. They are modalities. There are three modalities and there are four elements, fire, air, water, earth. So first on every wave is that plasma fire and then a solid frequency of earth to stabilise the wave. Then comes air, mutable air, Gemini. Gas, it's a gaseous frequency. It's akin to that state. So without going further on, well, I might just add the fourth one, cancer, cardinal water. Well, that's another frequency again, that's liquid. So you can see what the wave is doing. It has plasma, it has solid, it has gaseous nature, and it has a liquid nature to it. Because no wave can just be one frequency. Right. Yeah, along its... Along its uh, Unfilment. So to be, it would be safe to say that these these phases are personalities of the actual wave that's coming into our matrix. Absolutely, would that be a good way to describe it? Yeah, personalities. Like mm-hmm. we have personalities. The waves are personalities. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Archetypal. Archetypal. Mm-hmm. Archetype. Everything's all about archetypes. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yep. You could even say stereotypes. So Aryans. <laughs> You know, usually <laughs> people say things about, oh, Aryans, you know, they know pretty much some of the features and some of the characteristics of, of Aryans, whether they like them or not. <clears throat> but they, they've got a hunch, you know, they've got a, an idea because they look at their family members and they know their traits and they attribute it to those signs. Why? Well, because the conditions of the frequency from March the 21st to April the 21st every year, Aries is different to the next set of 30 degree frequencies and it grants or imbues animals, plants, individuals with that frequency. So certain archetypal characteristics will come f- through. So you, you know that <clears throat> Aryans are confident, leaders, good business people, fiery, intuitive Inspirational, thank you, Carl Jung. Stubborn. <laughs> Stubborn. <laughs> That's one of their features. Because mm-hmm. it's the leader, man. The leader doesn't want to be told what to do. And they're cardinal. And they're cardinal, yeah. Let's do the, the, the modes. What does cardinal mean? Well, cardo in Latin is a door, a hinge. So mm. the tropical points, the cross of the tropical points, Aries over here, Cancer at the top, Tropic of Cancer. Libra, and at the bottom, Capricorn. Those tropical points, they are the hinges. So following them will always be a cardinal sign. Here at the equinox is Aries. Bang, that's Aries. Here is Cancer. Here, that's Libra. And here, that's Capricorn for 30 degrees. And they are doors. Doorways. I didn't even look at it that way. Like the cardinals of Rome. Right. The cardinals of Rome, right. Well, and the Pope is the Pontifex Maximus, mm-hmm. the gate to heaven, the bridge to heaven, and mm-hmm. then the Cardinals are the doorways to heaven, supposedly. Supposedly, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, <they're> Sorry, Pope. <laughs> <laughs> I know you're just playing, your, I know you're just doing your job. It's all good, man. I don't, I don't hate you for that. <laughs> I'm glad he's doing that job. <laughs> yeah, because I mean, we wouldn't have a job if he didn't have a job, right? Mm-hmm. So it's kind of interesting. Yeah. Okay. For sure. Awesome. So... And so they are the doors to the seasons. So Aries opens up to spring, Cancer to summer, Libra to the fall, and Capricorn to winter. Then what follows them are the fixed signs. So you go over to the, that cross now, the dynamic, the static cross, which you see on all the churches, and sometimes you'll see this cross. Yeah. Like Hitler's swastika. Yeah. That's the cardinal cross. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's dynamic. It's moving. See that swastika is like standing still. Fixed. Static. Cardinal. Yeah. Fixed. Now, the fixed signs. What does that mean? <clears throat> well, that means the season is fixed. So Taurus over here is fixing. Rigid. Rigid spring. 
Aries was where the blossom was. Now the blossom's gone. Now Taurus, you see fruit coming. So you see this firm, earthy energy. Fruit is starting to grow. The Taurus, the bull. Okay? Over here you've got Leo in the fixed sign of fire. Yeah. Well, that's interesting. The hottest part of the year, Leo, fixed fire. Makes a lot of sense. It does. Mm -hmm. Then over here you've got Scorpio at the fall. And then over here you've got Aquarius on this side, yeah. fixed air in winter. So that's the fixed part of the season. Mutable mm -hmm. is akin to mutate. Changeable. Mutable. Adaptable. Mm -hmm. So you always see two. Two fish, two twins. Okay. Uh, two natured animal, a horse, a centaur with a yeah. human head. So he's coming, the human's coming out of the animal. It's, they're called bicorporeal signs. Bicorporeal. Okay. And Bonatti, <coughs> Guido Bonatti of the 12th century, a colleague or a friend of um, Dante Alighieri, he said that they are changeable in that they change the season. So Gemini, let's go back to our little cross. We went to the fixed position. Now we're coming beyond fixed and we're into the mutable signs. So Gemini up here, the twins, he says there are two twins because they are changing, mutating s spring into summer and they double the heat and get it prepared for cancer. So they're transition. Transition. Which, that's interesting because Donald Trump's a Gemini. Mm -hmm. He's transitioning from the old world order into the new world order. Maybe. You Possibility. See, that's, that's how it works. You're thinking. This is why you ask the question, how can it help you? Why, why do we want to learn syncretism and astrology? What, what benefit? Because now you know how to think. Yeah. You can mm -hmm. see more. You can see why your family members behave in certain ways. If they're a Gemini, you'll see that they're very mentally inclined. Intellectual, mm -hmm. conversational, friendly, sanguine. If they're Aryans, you'll see them leading the pack, sporting, martial arts. You'll see these certain behaviours and then you can bring your children up how they want to be, you know. Mm -hmm. Some might not want to be what their father does, a doctor or a dentist. They mm -hmm. might want to be a sportsman. I'm glad you brought that up uh, for, you know, parents listening to really try to understand who your child is is because I think so much in, in society <laughs> programs and, and tries to deprogram somebody's natural progression of the direction in which they were born into and, and want to go. So glad you brought that point up for all the parents listening. <laughs> sure. <laughs> Should really delve into really understanding their child from that perspective. Yep. And... There are other advantages. You can put all your Aryan children in a classroom together and all your Taurians. If you do things like that, <clears throat> you don't have to necessarily do it exactly like that, but you can tailor make your teaching to them. If you were a good coach, in order to win all ways, I know they're not going to take this advice, but the secret to winning all ways is astrological. For instance... In ancient times, to win a war, they had to strategize astrologically. You always put your Scorpios up front because they're fearless. Mm. Mars, water, intense water. You see their piercing eyes like an eagle, you know. They look and they're ready to fight and they don't back down. You put them in front. Your Geminis, you give them like... The, the javelins and to use their hands, right? Mm. Or even the sword. And they'd be behind the Aryans and the, and the Scorpios. Aryans would be second because Aryans are also martial and they don't back down either, but they're not as fierce as Scorpio. Uh, Sagittarians. What, what job would you give a Sagittarian? They'd have a bow and crossbow. Jeez. A bow and arrow. Archer. I mean, yeah. yeah, the archers. archers. The yeah. Shooting the flamed arrow. Yeah, like Arjuna. Yeah. Sagittarius. Yeah. You give them the bow and arrow. You don't give that to, say, your Taurines. You, what would you do with the Taurines? What would you give them? Mm, good question, man. So it's all about strategy, man. So now you're really getting people to think. You know, this is an interesting topic. When's the last time you talked about that? This is like putting people in war based upon their astrological chart. If they didn't do Fascinating. that. Fascinating. I haven't even thought about that. That would lose. 
Seriously, I, mean, I didn't even think, and then, but people go out into business, they have, they're working at jobs or they're hired and they're not in the right position. They're mm-hmm. sitting in the seat that they're not supposed to be at. Or they're, you're, you're anybody listening, you're, you, you want to start that business, but you're not fit for that business because you're not made to do that business. You've got to understand who you are based upon one of those layers, syncretism being astrological, then you got numerology, personality types, which we can get into, but that's not what this is about. But this is straight up astrological aspects and just that element alone is is just so deep understanding your characteristics and and leading with them Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yes unbelievable unbelievable i didn't i'd like that's the first time i've ever heard you talk have you talked about i've never heard you talk about going into war and setting up your your battle line and basing it on the astrological chart i have a few times i'm sure you have maybe i missed it or Mm -hmm. yeah but but i didn't miss it this time so (laughs) so you got it this time yeah you want your taurines to hold the shields like in the larynx the strong the the bulls are strong the phalanx the phalanx you know how the greeks won against the persians there was forty seven thousand greeks against two million persians because alexander the great was an astrologer of course he was he learned under aristotle the Greeks were great astrologers. They would never go into war without strategy. So you've got your Taurians to hold those shields. And then you've got the Arians and the Capricorns, which are good strategizers, especially in business skills. Mm-hmm. Like your generals, you put them as leaders, you know, yelling commands. You know, the Arians, come on, fight, don't back down. And you put the Scorpios up front, right? And then understanding when the right time to, to go into battle is, too, for you. Exactly, yeah. Yeah. right? <laughs> Hippocrates in the oath, conveniently they took out the last bit of the oath, where he said, if a medic is not an astrologer, he does is not worthy to be called a medic. Mm. Why? Here's another reason why astrology is so important. The moon. The moon is a monthly cycle. The female has a monthly cycle. It's called the moonstruation cycle. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. We, Men, we, moon. A, we actually have two, yeah, because <laughs> <laughs> yeah. we, we have to deal with the moon <laughs> and Mother Nature. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. So it's known that when the moon is in a sign, that moon is stimulated in its in the blood for instance when the moon is going through at leo the blood is now it's agitated it's it's moving so if a surgeon has you uh, down for an opera a heart surgery on monday and the moon is transiting leo you'll find that there'll be bleeding complications wow. you see yeah you want the moon to be in the next sign or a couple of signs down not in leo if you're going to do brain surgery and the moon's transiting Aries, probably bleed to death. This is why there are many accidents and doctors are the third cause of death in the world. Just go to Wikipedia, it'll tell you, doctors, third. <laughs> I go and check it every month wow. just to make sure it hasn't gone down lower. Wow. Just so I can keep telling. A third. Third highest cause leading of death, doctors. Wow. And that's why, I'm telling you. They're on the operating theatre, they're operating the kidneys when the moon is in Libra. And, oh, sorry, you bled to death. Oh, mm, dang. <laughs> <laughs> Too okay. bad. Oh. Makes sense, though. Wow. It does. This is amazing for all doctors out there. <laughs> Definitely, yeah. they need to understand this. That's so fascinating. But they're in it for the money. No, I didn't know that. But they're in it for the money. So I can imagine why Mm. they're going to just sacrifice the third because it's like the time, you know, going, moving that calendar around to have people operated on on specific times when that transits are going through and the planets are supposed to be in certain areas doesn't fit in their calendar. No, that's not necessarily true because actually Mm. a lot of doctors and surgeons don't do surgery every day. True. And I, I, I think that that's but a they're super broad busy, though. statement to say. Well, maybe. I, maybe. I don't I'm think that many surgeons would want a patient to bleed to death. No. So I think if they had that knowledge and they, they knew that they could utilize mm-hmm. astrology, I think that they would definitely <laughs> utilize it and look into it and take it seriously. For sure. J.P. Morgan said millionaires don't use astrology. Billionaires, billionaires do. do. Yep. Mm-hmm. Right. I know that one. And I know they do. Absolutely. They don't just have luck. 
they go by the stars. They have their astrology and they want to know yeah. when to invest, when to sell, yeah. when to buy, when to sell. There are rhythms, like all rhythms. Yeah. Absolutely. You know, you can't be breathing out and then out and then out and then out ten times in a row because mm-hmm. you'll die. Yeah. You've got to do a <laughs> out, in, out, in. You've got to share it. And so along the way, <clears throat> so they will be looking at the moon, for instance. They won't be investing when the moon's waning or in the last quarter, in the balsamic period of the moon, you see. They'll be looking at new moon, right? Put some money down, put some stocks on this, that and the other. Huh. Waxing moon. Here's another example. Cut your hair when the moon's waxing. It'll grow real nice and fast and rich. Cut your hair when it's waning. Do, you can do it to try half, cutting half one side when the moon's waxing and the other half when it's waning and watch it yourself. You'll see this side, if you cut it every month when it's waxing, you'll see it'll grow and this one won't grow. Wow, really? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Mow your lawns yeah. when the moon is waning. That's the best time and then it just it won't, won't grow yeah. uh, when it's waxing. You're not, in, you're not in sequence with the cycles. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. My father, who was just a a, a country bumpkin, <laughs> for want of a better word, uh, he had the best gardens, and he always planted by the moon. What, what was his birthday? Virgo. He was a Virgo. The workers. The, the earth. earth. The earthbound people. He never did anything that wasn't by the moon, and he always had the best gardens. Wow. It just shows you. So it's in your blood, man, to do this stuff. So he was into astrology. In his own ignorant way, yeah. So he wasn't aware that it, it came, really, yeah. It came it was down to him from the, cu- from the culture. It mm-hmm. just came down. The yeah. Italians, just they knew it once upon a time. Of course, then the Catholic yeah. Church would have persecuted it, but they would still have whispered, ah, oh, you know, you don't plant, don't you plant your little plants when the moon's waning. You only plant seeds under the seeds when the moon's waning. But plants that have already germ- germinated... When the moon's waxing, yeah, because they won't grow, and especially in the feminine signs, like if the moon's waxing, for instance, in spring, and it's in Pisces or Taurus or Cancer, the feminine signs, the water signs. Man, I experimented with this one year, and I got all the results. I planted some seeds. I put a sign there: Pisces, moon waxing. Really? Yeah, yeah, and I noticed the difference. This is amazing. For sure. Wow. Yeah. Let's test this out. Let's cut I know half you your hair. Let's, no, let's cut I'll half your hair. Let's cut my half my hair. No, I just freaking haven't <laughs> cut it in the past year, so I'm going to just go ahead and test it on my let's, ass. Let's Sorry. just cut one side and see what <laughs> Maybe happens. Maybe. That's, I'm open to it. Hey, these days hairstyles are so weird. No one will you know. No one will know. Yeah, why not? <laughs> They're not yeah. going to. No one will know. <laughs> so we're talking with the great wow. syncretist Santos Bonacci from... Myrtleford, Australia. Myrtleford, Australia. Myrtleford, yeah. Victoria, Australia. Mm. Small little farming town, right? Little Italy. Little Italy. Tobacco. Tobacco. I grew up on a tobacco farm. In fact, on my Facebook page, you'll see me with my sister tying tobacco in the kilns. Really? We got the tobacco leaves. Mm. Mm. Interesting. Mm. Wow. Interesting. The first job I did when I left school, tobacco. Wow. Mm. Interesting. Wow. Santos, why do you think that the churches have demonized astrology? and the mystical art platforms? Ah, because then they know that if you know the truth, the truth will set you free. And yes. they, don't, they don't want free people. And they use that scripture. And, they use it and quite often. And to suppress often. because they, don't, they really don't want to give people the, the truth, the power. But in so doing, Gabby, what they're doing is preserving the truth because they always talk about Jesus and his 12 disciples, uh, Israel and his 12 tribes, the 12 pillars in the temple of my God in Revelation, and 12, 12, 12, 12, everything's 12, 12. Then you go to um, <clears throat> the book of Job, and Job 32, 34, I think it is. Boy, I usually always get those <laughs> numbers. Um, it says, can you tell forth Maseroth? So all of a sudden you see this word Maseroth. And it's a Hebrew word. And you wonder, well, hang on a minute. This is an English Bible. All the other words, all of them, they're all translated into English. And here's Maseroth. Why don't they translate this word? They left it alone. Well, because it's Zodiac. 
Uh, that's that, that's Maseroth means zodiac. Zodiac oh, in man. Hebrew. I got to decode that now. I always tell Christians, well, what's the Bible talking about? Uh, can you do you know your Maseroth? What God was reproving Job, saying, can you tell it forth? Do you know when Orion's coming up? Do you know when Ursa Major is on the horizon? Can you tell it? Can you tell forth the zodiac? Because if you can't, you're not my servant. You're an ignoramus, basically. Uh. It's in the Bible, man. It's right there hiding in the Bible. Yeah, well, I mean, and one of my favorites is Luke 22, verses 10, where Jesus talks about the Passover and going from following that guy into that next house and he's bearing a pitcher of water. Make sure you go into that house. Aquarius. Aquarius. From Pisces, because he's the fisher of men. He says, when you go into the city, you will see a man with a pitcher of water. Follow him into the upstairs chamber. Well, the upstairs chamber is Aquarius because Aquarius is now going up Upwards. from Capricorn, you know, and it's it's rising up. It's it's like a higher uh, declination, and of course, it's the sign that we transitioned into according to the cycle of precession. So, um, it's it's in there. Uh, usually, churchgoers will say, "Oh, but the Bible condemns astrology," and I will say, "No, it doesn't. It condemns astrologers." But then again, God's condemning his prophets. He's saying, woe to you prophets of mine who, who don't prophesy correctly. Woe to you judges who do not judge correctly for the, the widows and the orphans. And you steal their money and you put them in jail. Woe to you, uh, Jesus, how about this one? Woe to you lawyers who bind the little children of God with heavy laws which you do not wish to budge yourself. Scribes. So is Jesus condemning law when he condemns the lawyers? Clearly, it's, it's in the Bible. No, he came to fulfill God's law. In other words, to carry it out perfectly. Condemning lawyers doesn't mean you condemn law. Condemning astrologers doesn't mean you condemn astrology. I condemn the astrologers as well. Yeah. <laughs> I always do because... They're, they're not doing it right, the correct, it's doing it the right way versus the wrong way. They're just a little business scam. They're just, yeah. they're all, it's awful. It's cheap, nasty. Yeah. They think the moon's a rock, whereas Ptolemy says the moon is entirely luminous. Yeah. I can see it's a light. I can see it's not solid and you can't land on it and play golf and ring President Nixon. <laughs> <laughs> hey, President, it's uh, Nixon. Nixon. Nick is, you know, oh, Nick. Saint Nick, yeah. Saint yeah. Nick, the son of Saint Nick, the devil. Yeah. Hey, devil, uh, how's Watergate <laughs> going there? Uh, any more water scandals? Games. Weren't we just talking about the water yesterday? Mm -hmm. Water. That's right. Wow, Watergate, mm. how programmable water is. Mm. Mem, the Hebrew letter for water, memory. Memory. Water has memory, mem. Mm. And we're full of water, mm -hmm. over 70%, mm. they say. Probably more than more. that. Mm. Probably more. Probably more than that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow, Okay. I thought it was closer to 19. It yeah. probably is. Yeah. It probably is. Yeah. So I don't know. But I want to give a big shout out to our sponsor, thehealersproject.com. We're all wearing a T-shirt from The Healers Project. Santo has on the love languages, all about 50 languages just saying the word love. And Gabby has the one grateful. And I have the man going from evolution down to uh, meditating. Kind of cool. <laughs> anyway, check out thehealersproject.com. It's one of our sponsors. Um, Thank you. Gabby, I know you want to ask Santos the question about the Christos. Oh, It's a yes. big one. It's a big one. And I know, you know, we have about probably 10 minutes left, and I know Santos can really hammer this one, this one out. <laughs> but, uh, you know, and we get into Tantra and the whole aspect of, but Christos. So, Gabby, ask him that. What, what do you want to ask him about <laughs> that? Well, I know, but me more specific, because that's just my interpretation. Go, go ahead, it. Logan. I'm going to let you take it. <laughs> Okay, Because we, we only have 10 minutes. Well, so I mean, we, we got about 10, 15 okay. minutes, whatever. We got some time left. We can always extend. But anyway, go ahead, Gabs, because I know go you ahead. have you want to pick his brain. No, go ahead. Go ahead. Go <laughs> ahead, Logan. Go I'll for just it. jump in. Yeah, you know jump in. But you know what I'm talking about because, the, listen, we're talking about sex. I mean, we'll as well get into the nitty gritty because it's so predominant. Perversion as as at an all-time high. I'm sure you know that porno is the most watched out of anything on the internet today. It's bigger than any, all the sports conglomerates put together. It's mm -hmm. completely massive and it's taking over the society, right? But it's not what it was designed to be like, right? So the Christos, the Christ, that's what I know that she wants you to kind of explain about and how that moves into porno. 
and how it fits into that agenda. Yep. Remember, we, start from the, the basics because some of our, you know. You're like, what are you, are you talking about porno and well, you're talking about Christ? Where does porno our, and Christ come into this? Some of our listeners aren't familiar with this subject, mm-hmm. so I want to. This is a, this is a great a, topic, though, right, man. Oh. Really, mm-hmm. A really good, clear understanding. For sure. So we have such a thing called seminaries, don't we? So what would you send young boys to learn in a seminary? Well, (laughs) you would teach them what to do with this fluid, which is obviously able to uh, procreate. Mm -hmm. And so it must be a holy fluid like like blood. Blood is not just a a fluid. It's it's precious to you. I mean, you can can, uh, get a sample of blood and learn so much about you your constitution and where you're lacking and what, what's in your blood. So these are holy fluids. And and you can procreate, you can uh, give life to another conscious being. This is how powerful it is. So what they did, Samuel Omweor, one of the readers I, I read on this subject, he said, once upon a time something happened in the seminaries where they were occupied and inverted, and rather than teaching what to do with it, they taught them the left-hand path, which is anything goes, don't worry. You can just have, practice black tantra, grey is in the middle, white tantra is on the right-hand path. Right is right, left is sinister in Latin, which is sin. Left. Mm. The left-hand path. What they taught them was it's okay, you know, just to... Uh, ejaculate at will and that's how you have your orgasm <clears throat> but prior to that in tantric sex they, sex they said no you have your you implode your orgasms and you save your energy you use those fluids those nutrients in the semen for the materials to build a 13th cranial nerve it takes 12 years between two loving partners loyal and faithful white tantra no grey no black after 13 years, their nervous system is strengthened and it's the tree of life, actually, the nervous system in your body. It's the Christ in you. The blood is the Jesus in you. So when you respect your nervous system, you see people today, they've got all sorts of nervous disorders, neurasthenia, all kinds of things like uh, multiple sclerosis. That's just they haven't gone walking barefoot enough and getting vitamin D from the sun and solarized energy and so their nerves get really weak and they get sort of they get really weak and then they end up in hospital and die so they, you would say they, they they get they kind of cut themselves off from the natural flow yeah they haven't preserved those fluids the wet george Carey, dr george Carey, 100 years ago awesome. in his work he said the wetter you are the longer you live the wetter your food the longer you live and so we've only been given a certain amount of chrism which comes from the claustrum it's called chrism and if you save it, you'll have charisma. It's the Christ in you. So, like they say, you only have a certain amount of breaths. So slow down, meditate, do yoga. Slow your breaths because you've only got so many. If you slow them down, you live that long. If you <laughs> breathe really quickly in your throat and everything, short lifespan. I've seen it. People, what's that uh, lung disease when they're having short breaths? Uh, as Asthma. Yes, asthma. One of yeah. those, yeah. yeah. And and you see them getting really, really skinny and they, <laughs> and they die, you know, short of breath. So the same with the chrism. The more you squander it, that's the sacred oil that burns the lamp in you. Hence Jesus talked about five foolish virgins and five wise virgins waiting for the groomsmen to come at which hour they do not know. He's gonna come out of his nuptial suite and he's gonna look down and say, Oh look at those beautiful five Wise virgins with oil in their receptacles come, come to, you know, the feast of the the, the groom. But the the foolish virgins, they ended up their candles went out. They wasted their oil, and they didn't I have. I never spare. thought of it that way. That's your oil, the Christos in you. The more you preserve it and recycle it, as the Buddhists taught, and all of the seminary schools, they taught what to do with it. It's, there's potassium in there. There's magnesium. These are nutrients, even your urine, 
even your urine, people are wasting that. You can drink that. But yeah, I've tried it one time. Oof, yeah. It was a doozy, but I tried it. At least Parasite, I can say. Parasites <laughs> and rubbish go out the back end, not out of the, the urinary tract. That's all filtered by the, the kidneys. The kidneys. Yeah, you, you, uh, urine therapy is mm-hmm. very, very healing. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But have you done that much? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, I have. Yeah. And received. I've read about it. I haven't tried it. Mm. Yeah. God, it took me two hours. Like I've sat there and stored, stared at him. Like, really? I don't know if I want to do this. And then <laughs> <laughs> it took me two hours, and then mm-hmm. I finally took a sip, and I was like, "That tastes like popcorn, actually." Yeah, <laughs> almonds. <laughs> almonds. Yeah, mm. it's got a very distinct, but it's very interesting drinking your own urine. But anyway, so you're saying it takes thirteen years? You said thirteen years. Twelve. Twelve. Twelve mm-hmm. to to fully feel the effects. So sustaining for for twelve years, yes, to to fully feel the effects and to restore nerves and to build a thirteenth cranial nerve because you've got twelve, and build, right? And that nerve's called the Christ nerve, and it gives you access to the akashic records, and it it gives you peace. What happens is you raise the chrism, right? So you recycle it, you have your orgasms. What happens is during sex. And men can have, wow, prolonged orgasms, better than the ones that the women have. <laughs> you know, mm. They can just sit Sorry, there and have ladies. it. Mm, yeah, you can, because what you do is you, the coiled kundalini at the bottom, at the sacral, you keep it down with your breath. So rather than it going straight up to your head and you have an ejaculation <laughs> orgasm, three minutes later, you're, you know, three minutes you begin sex and then three yeah. minutes later you finish, then you, yeah, because you've, you've, you've lost all your all the energy. energy. You save your energy, and then the next time you have sex, you start from where you left off, at the top, not at the bottom, because uh. you have to restart again. You've got to start from the bottom, and then you've got to thrust like a monkey in to get back to that ejaculation, and then you just get depleted, bang, down again. In 2012, when I started doing it, I made the decision, because I was doing great tantra from 2007 to 12, and I thought, every time I did ejaculate, I was just depleted angry, stressed, neurotic, huh. psychotic, irascible, depressed, tired. And when I didn't, I had a better, a better day the next day. I didn't have a guilt and shame. Somehow there's a guilt and shame attached to it. And so then when I did it in 2012 without just pure white tantra, I realised then how it works. What happens is it's like a pump. You're pumping it up and... George Kerry says, as it goes through the chakras, it bursts the chakra and the frequency of that chrism increases. So it takes on the actual chakra points as it goes up that... It gets recombined and restored as it goes up to the head heaven. Uh, So every colour adds to and it ends up becoming more pure, more pure, more pure, more pure, more pure. Yes. As it goes up. Yes. Until it reaches its final destination. Yes, because as it goes, as it descends, it gets differentiated. It goes to the third ventricle, the pineal gland makes a masculine electrical energy, and a, a fluid, uh, a chrism, and it goes down the pingala. The pituitary body, the feminine, Joseph and Mary, she makes a negative fluid and it goes down the ida. And then it comes to the thyroid and gets differentiated and di- diluted uh-huh. again. Then the thymus and it goes down to the, the kidneys and down to the sacral, and it's differentiated according to George Carey. So that's why you have to ri- you have to raise it up so it gets purer and purer and purer and purer, and it comes back different to when it left. It's a different substance. And when it hits the fornix, an electrical phenomenon occurs where you are illuminated. That's where Jesus is dead in the womb, in the tomb for three days, and then he's all of a sudden a white light, and he comes out of the tomb and he's resurrected. That's you. It's a story about you. So what happens then is the pineal gland begins to make a supercharged dimethyltryptamine substance called the blood of the Christ, which saves you. And it purifies your blood, neutralises the pH, restores the nervous system, and you are immortal. Wow. That's how important it is. Death. Yeah, wow. Mic drop, baby. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's the elixir of life. And, 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 and Logan, Logan's sitting over there thinking, can I do this? This sounds amazing. Can I actually? <laughs> yeah. can, can I do this? But, well, anything's but, possible. So. Yeah, but, it, but, but people still will feel benefits and effects 
even if they don't make it to the 12 year. Yes. If somebody Absolutely. sustains for, you know, I, I think, you know, t- people, um, you know, just taking, you know, taking time, you know, setting maybe goals <laughs> for expanding, you know, cause I, I think for a lot of people listening, it sounds like, whoa, wait a minute. But I think if, if, if people could experience a little bit and really see the changes, like you said, well, after a year, you know, and I realized I, I felt so much better, you know, and I had more energy and I felt more full of, you know, life force. Um, so I, I think for everybody listening, you know, to, to at least try, you know, for six months or a year. Just go for a try for a couple of weeks and then go for a month and then extend. And That's what I was doing for five smart. years when I did grey. You know, yeah. I, once I would do it, another time, well, I was too lazy. But every time I, I was lazy, yeah. it hurt me. Uh, and I couldn't, it punished me. And I'd, I felt awful the next day, whereas I'd wake up energised the next day. I get it. Mm. I get it. I, I, I get it. No, I totally get it. Yeah. So you mentioned the 12, you get up to the top. Now it's interesting that you mentioned that and you get to 12 and then you actually get to 13. I I don't know if you know this or not, but like the the turtle has 13 squares on its shell and it's supposed to be mother earth and animal tarot. It's the 10th, which 10 is the 10th Fibonacci is the yod and whatever. But, but I'm sure there's significance to the reason why a turtle has 13 squares on its shell, the lumen, uh, the, the, uh, the, um, the lunar phases, and then you think that plays a role into what you're talking about? Absolutely, for sure. No mistake about it. 100%. Yeah. 13. The Christ and his 12 disciples, it's everywhere you go. And everywhere. there were 13 people sitting at the table the Last Supper, even though Judas was the deceiver. There still was 13 people in mm-hmm. that painting. Mm-hmm. That's right. No 13 floors in hotels, folks. Next time you go and press that button, check it out. I doubt you'll see one on a main hotel chain. No 13th floor. I have a question. Is there any difference uh, between uh, women and men? No. Good no. question. They both have souls that must come to the light and to, to ascend and be restored. Mm-hmm. What you're doing basically is you're restoring yourself to when before you came here. Before you came here, you were unconditioned, unlimited, mm-hmm. and undifferentiated and unqualified, but Generally, I like to just use those two. You, you are unlimited. How would you like to be unlimited to have all your power and whatever you want to manifest good in this world, it would come instantly. How would you like that? Yeah. I know you have beautiful uh, aspirations. Gabby, you've shared them with me and you too. We, we all have here. Mm-hmm. But, you know, when it's slow and there's obstacles and, and you, you, well, you think, oh, I thought I was more powerful than that. Why is this obstacle and why is this happening? Why am I getting sick and... We have to restore that. I don't like being limited. I don't like being dependent on food and, and going to the bathroom. Sometimes I'm, oh, you, you need a bathroom, it's not there. I, that's limiting. It's a condition. Totally. I, and the chakra system is a condition. You hear a lot of people saying the wrong thing, that the chakra system is made by the Anunnaki and it was an implant and to, to keep us enslaved. Yes and no. You've got to have the whole truth. It is a condition, but they are conditions. Manly P. Hall said it. He said... As you come down through the planets into incarnation, Saturn is the tomb, the moon at the bottom is the womb, because Saturn's the grim reaper, he takes you to your tomb. He says you get vestments, spiritual vestments, and then when you hit the earth, you get a physical body. The earth gives you a physical body. But the seven chakras are given to you by the planets. Top one is Kronos, crown chakra. The moon at the red, where menstruation happens, is the bottom chakra. Mm. It's a no-brainer. Red, blood. Mm-hmm. And the crown, your corona, like Jesus has a corona, that's Kronos, the crown chakra. So what you're trying to do is you're getting back to God, which is sitting, as the Brahmins say, right on the top of your head. When you meditate, mm-hmm. as though God was sitting on your head, you will go to God. You have to ascend to that unlimited. Because here, this is unlimited. Your body's limited. It's conditioned by the chakras. Mm-hmm. So you have to think in a conditioned way. You have to have conditioned emotions. Everything is limited in this world. And it gets frustrating. I want to be unlimited. Yeah. Well, I think that's where we're headed, you know, Mm -hmm. especially in this age of I am. Mm. You know, the Aquarian revolution, it's a matter of understanding yourself and then being unlimited at that point. Because once you understand who you are, you have more tools to play with. It's like, you know, showing up as a carpenter and, oh, I forgot my hammer and I'm going to use a screwdriver to nail, you know, drive that nail home. doesn't work that way. 
You need all the tools in the toolbox. And I think that's where we're, we're in this age of, of Aquarius. So definitely. I, I, I have to I have to ask you because I have you all the way from Australia. Uh, speaking of ascension and, and you're a, a vegan for how many years? Nearly 12 years now. Nearly 12 years. Do you want to just touch on that as well and how that plays into to everything because I think you would have such a great uh, explanation and answer for that. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. Why, ve- why, why vegan, why it's here, why you decided to go that route, you know, what role that plays in your life, how your life's changed with that. That's a big thing right now. Yeah. My intuition told me that, but also my studies, Pythagoras, vegetarian, Plato, the Neoplatonists, like Porphyry, vegetarians. Why? Well, they said because it's the, the diet of ascension. Just as you have to modify your sexual habits, so does your eating habits. All the scriptures say gluttons do not inherit God's kingdom, and God's kingdom is within you. What it means is you will not inherit that peace, that unlimited bliss that you're looking for. You really, your heart desires sat-chit-ananda, existence, consciousness, and bliss. That's all your heart is looking for. How to get it? The diet, the right diet. When you die, whatever you are doing, if you're a materialist, you're greedy, you hurt people, animals, you exploit them and eat them, etc., you will assuredly incarnate in a place where all those practices are happening. Tolstoy said, as long as there are abattoirs, there will be wars. So it's, yeah, it's an individual responsibility to... You know, begin that process and stop exploiting animals because really, um, even though the scriptures have been misinterpreted and says that you can eat these animals and you can't eat those and here we eat cows but we don't eat dogs. But in China, I guess, and Vietnam, I've seen it, they eat dogs. Mm -hmm. Why is that acceptable? Why do we have cows in our fridge and we spend thousands on our dogs? Thousands here and thousands there. Who who gets to judge you? You get to say, oh, no, it's, that's fine. I, I don't want to see the suffering in the abattoirs and all the murder and the blood and the torture exactly. of these animals. I don't care about that. They taste great. <laughs> and they'll chain up their dogs in the backyard, though. Exploitation. If yeah. you exploit, you'll be exploited. Yep. If you eat, you'll be eaten. eaten. Thank you, Bhagavad Gita. Mm-hmm. I, you know, I, I say that to people like, let me drop you in the lion's den at the zoo and see how fast you run. You're just going to sit there and let the lion eat you? Or are you just going to, are you going to run? Yeah. You're going to run, man. If you're in the ocean and you see a shark, you see people just bolting out of the ocean. It's our inclination to do that, mm-hmm. right? So it's like, where do we have the right to say, well, I'm going to go ahead and shoot that cow because I, you know, I can do that. And it's a disconnection because we're, we're disconnecting from that life, from that, that animal's, you know, spirit where we're able to, or not, I shouldn't say because I've been a, <laughs> I've been a vegan for, I don't know, uh, for probably 13, 14 years now. So I haven't killed, uh, age an animal in that long. Um, but, but people have this disconnection and, you know, it's really fascinating because, I have a partner who's not a vegan <laughs> and, and he doesn't see that as he's killing an animal. And I, I have these conversations and I'm like, no, you, you're killing the animal cause you're eating it. So you're because you pay somebody else to kill the animal or you, you pay a premium <laughs> for yeah, that. It's, it's a personal journey and it there's is. nothing you can it force is. on people because you know what, if they don't learn it in this lifetime, they're going to come back and do it all go all over again. As it is. Know, but the so. interesting thing is, is he, he could never, you know, he could never kill our dog. He could never kill a yeah. dog. So yeah. it's, it is, you know, you're programming because so, yeah. you've got a relationship with that dog. You can see the intelligence. You look in their eye, you hear their soul, yeah. you feel their emotions, but you didn't do it for the cow you ate, did you? You didn't yeah. look in their eyes. You betrayed that cow. You were sitting there watching television and just going to your fridge and cooking a steak and that cow was betrayed by you. You know, mm. you do bear a little bit of responsibility. But as you said, everyone at their, yeah. at their level. So if it's they are eating time. flesh, it's probably because they need to at the moment that's right Mm -hmm. the time will come that that will change that's gonna it has to change yeah because that's the shift 
takes time. It takes time. It does definitely take when time. When I met so Logan, it's a personal he was, journey. He was I was. I was animal. huge as carnivore. I was eating a pound of meat a day, and <laughs> at least, <laughs> at least. So yeah, I've made some serious changes in my life. So no doubt about it. But it's a personal journey, and it's mm, the, when the timing is. is right for you, and that's why yeah. you can't hold judgment. That's we, the we, biggest thing. Is yeah, not to hold we just asked that, that you 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 be open and 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 think and look and explore is what I always say. Yeah, yeah. we have a, we have a video, a forty one second video, uh, thou not shall kill. And it's, it's literally a guy standing over this bin where this is cow and he's got the gun in his hand. He's got blood on his on thing, whatever. You don't see his face. And he lifts the gun up to the cow and the cow goes, the cow knows. And it's so sad. And every time he, he does it like two times, he lifts the gun up over there and the cow just goes crazy. You know, and then he puts it down and it gets calm. And then he picks it, you know, and it's just like, they know. They, they, and it's just, I don't know. I mean, I, I think if everybody just watched that piece that we have, on the healers mm -hmm. trust that one beast well, man. now we're gonna have to would you change your mind video. on you know if you had to kill your own cows i think you wouldn't be eating too much meat well that's the thing i know i couldn't kill an animal yeah. like that no way if you put if most people can if you put the animal in front of them yeah. you know if you went to a restaurant and you said i'll have chicken and they brought out the chicken they say okay well y you kill the chicken the restaurant would be out of business <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> if they did it that way. There's this funny video from Brazil where a guy is is at the shops. You know how they do tasting things. So he's passing, he's stopping the women and says, "Hey, would you like to have a sausage?" And the woman's, "Oh yes, yes, yes." And so <laughs> he, he, he goes on the table, grabs a little piglet, <laughs> and he's got like this mixer, a, a box. It's supposed to be the, the uh, mincer, right? And, uh -huh. he's, and he goes, "Wow, this is fresh." And he's got the little pig. <laughs> and the pig's a cute little pig, and the and the woman's like. And she's hitting the man. She's going, no, wow. no. And, and, and he's going, but hang on, but you wanted the sausage. Yes, but you're not going to kill that pig. Well, how do you get sausage? Yeah, how do you get sausage? Mm. Hello? Yeah. Where do you think it comes the from? The people were disgusted. Every single person was horrified. Even the, the hardened, hardcore flesh eaters, they were like, don't you dare kill a little pig. Yeah. Imagine how many little cows screaming for their mothers. I grew up on a, on a farm. I heard the cows at night. Mm, uh, it was Awful. You couldn't sleep. Because wow. they take the veal, the they little take, calves take the little away. Calves you know? away. The little babies. And they sit there having this tender veal. Oh, it's delicious. <laughs> and red wine. Lovely. Yeah. The yeah. aftermath. They don't see the beginning of it all. Yeah. yeah. So does does wow. does does that affect the the crystals too? Does yes. that it does. Yes. Okay. Cow blood, uh, animal blood, and human oh. blood do not mix. Whatever you're doing when you die, when you die, if you're still eating flesh. You will not ascend. You can't, cannot ascend. Yeah, I, I believe, I mean, I think, you know, I've always said that the mark of the beast, animals are beasts. Mm -hmm. If you eat, consume animals, you get the mark. Yes. Perhaps it's a, it's a possibility. That's one way right? of saying it. One way of saying it. Sure. That's how I look at it. I just think it's, it's the natural process of this Aquarian age is mm -hmm. to go towards the plants. Yeah. Yeah. Which is why veganism is so big these days. Yeah. Yeah. It's People not a cult, folks. It's not a cult. Neither is the flat earth. It's not a cult. No, <laughs> no there's, there's truths in there, man. You just got to find them. Mm -hmm. You just got to find them and ask for yeah. them. One more thing I just want to bring up uh, for anybody listening. We, we didn't really go into astrology and how uh, you do amazing. Well, both of you guys do both amazing <laughs> astrology readings. Uh, I've, I'm surrounded by astrologists. It's amazing. Um, and uh, I, I want to just touch really quickly um, for anybody listening. Uh, you were talking a little bit about your, your partner now and how your charts line up and how you lay the charts on top of each other. And, and for anybody listening who I think is maybe struggling in the relationship department, I think it's something that I just wanted to bring up and, and have you touch on for a second and how that can help them. For sure. Yeah. It's called synastry. You've heard of synastry. synergy and symmetry. Synastry. Astry is the stars. And so what you do is you, you get the uh, chart of one individual and you compare it with the other one. You overlap them, you see. So what you're doing is you're charting the electromagnetic constitution of each individual and superimposing them over the others and you'll see that some people who are really good together they've got all these things that are lining up they just and you can and you can see it's good synastry others you see there's not much lining up you know and and the way that the, the planets come together it's like it's forced and you can see that in the relationship so mm. 
you know, if that's the case, you can improve it. There's certain ways to improve it. I won't go into that now. But or you leave them and get someone, <laughs> <laughs> someone that has better synesthy. <laughs> but it's easy to tell, and you can all, you can see it anyway. You, you you can see the synesthy between people. You know, some people just they say, you know, I clicked with them. You know, or we just clicked. Yeah. Right. right. Well, that's astrological. No doubt about it. It's mm-hmm. all astrological. There's not a, a, a silly reason like. Oh, we, we share the same hobbies and, oh, we click. It's astrological. Right. Yeah, and when and you don't it, click, it's astrological as well. And then, so, so and, you, and I, would, I would assume that when you are more awake and you're more conscious and you raise the chrism and your vibration goes up, then you naturally will attract the right kinds of people in your life that are in that same harmonious environment and vibration. So you don't have to work at the law of attraction as much. Like... You know, I mean, I've been a fan of it for a long time. You know, we've studied the law of attraction together. And, you know, when you're conscious of that, it's great. But I think when you naturally go up the ladder and raise your consciousness, it just becomes standard in your life to where you're on that frequency and you attract those people that are, you know, without trying at all. You know, like there's in in the human design, there's the manifestors, the manifesting generators. They just think of that stuff and it just comes, you know. And I think we all get to that level when your consciousness goes up at a very high point and then you just bring it all in and you don't have to really think about it anymore. Yeah, you're operating on a different level now. You're, you're, more, you're more in tune with what dynamics you're looking for and you, you spot yes. it. Yes. Rather than go to a party or something and you, you know, you're, looking you want, for, yeah. you're looking for something and you, you grab the wrong one yeah. because you don't understand electrodynamics. You don't understand what's, how people are configured inside. You see a pretty guy or a pretty girl and you just want them and they're wrong for you. Yeah. Whereas now you're sort of, mm-hmm, I know what I want now and it, the universe always provides. It always provides. That's awesome. Mm-hmm. Well, that's about it for the healers tonight. Santos, you know what, man? Thank you so much for coming on and sharing some of your night with us because I know you could be anywhere tonight. And uh, Thanks for having dude, me. You're, you're, mm. Dude, you know, become a great friend. Mm-hmm. I appreciate you so much. I know Gabby yeah. appreciates you so, so much. So grateful. Thanks Very for your grateful. wonderful hospitality. Yeah. Thank this, you. This the actual shirt goes My off pleasure. to you. Oh, yes. I know. It's beautiful. Grateful. Yes. Yeah. yeah, so really for the, the healersproject.com, support, support us. That's what we're all about. Santos, thanks for coming on. My name's Logan. The lovely Gabrielle. This is the Healers Podcast. Thank you so much. Thanks for coming on. Until next time, Santos, huh? Thank you. We'll have you back on again. (laughs) Uh, Before we go, though, where can we find you? If someone wants to get a reading for you, let's splash that up on the screen. What's the easiest way to find you? My website has a booking page. You just fill in the details. What's that website? uh, Universaltruthschool.com. I'm going to make sure I get that up on the screen so they can book a reading through that as well. I know you're on Facebook. You have limited spaces on there because everybody's after you. And then uh, for those that can get to you on Skype, and if they know your Skype name, I'm not going to give it away, but... <laughs> I don't mind. Santos Bonacci, one yeah, word. Yeah, I know. I know you're not. Mm. I'm just trying to be funny. Um, okay, great. So, awesome. You do the astrological readings. Mm. Anybody that's interested in that, he's a master at it, so I definitely intrigue you. I'm excited for my reading. I'm yeah, Gabby's going to get it. Tomorrow morning. <laughs> Tomorrow morning, <laughs> yeah, before you go. <laughs> yeah. So, Santos, gonna, Santos is going to be in Mexico next week. Right? To yep. do a uh, weekend. To do a, to 14 do a, hours of Spanish syncretism. Wow. Saturday awesome. and Sunday. Awesome. Mexico City. Cool. Amazing. And we got some big things in store here in the United States, I can assure you. Oh, yeah. Love LA. I'm a coming back. Yeah. <laughs> I know you're coming back. We look forward to having you back. Yeah. For sure. Beautiful city. <laughs> it is. Of it angels. Is. It is. So for those of you that don't think that good people are here, I don't know what your level you're vibrating at. But We're over here. <laughs> We're right here. Yeah, man. Some good people at this table. And everybody that you've been hanging out with, man, wow. Some amazing people at that event in Burbank, man. If you made it out to the Burbank event, thank you for coming out. And, uh, man, what some great people. Yeah. For sure. Awesome. So my name's Logan, the lovely Gabrielle, Mr. Sanso Spinacci. Thanks thank for you. Having thank on, buddy. you. Awesome. Until next time. All right, man. Namaste. Good night, Namaste. everybody. <laughs>